I'm Dan Brisbois, and welcome to the Farmer Spreadsheet Academy. Today, I'm going to answer a question that came up in a recent Build a Better Crop Plan workshop that I gave, um, where somebody was asking about how to use their crop plan information to have a visual crop map of their crops, which is a great question, but it's a tricky answer, and it was trickier than I could give in the actual workshop, so I'm recording this video to go through it. Now, I'm going to give a heads up that this is a more advanced tip than I usually do on this channel. Um, so stand, stay warned. Um, and I'm going to explain it as simple as I can. There's a couple parts that need a little bit more advanced information to, to use. Um, and if you're curious to get into the spreadsheets and look even deeper into how it works, you can look in the show notes below and you can get to that spreadsheet. The end point that we want to get to is a crop map that shows the locations of your crops, the blocks and beds in the field, and the field week number that is, or, or the week number, um, uh, like week 19 <laughs> through 45, and then what's growing in the field at each of those times. So here in block 101, bed one, there's lettuce from week 19 to 25, and then week 28 to 33. Um, and so this is the end result that we want to have, something that's clear, visual, and lets us easily see what's going on in the field. The starting point, of course, is your crop plan. And you're going to have to turn your crop plan into this format. And it might be that you use a pivot table or some other formulas to create a report to get this into this format. But this is what the format looks like. So you're going to need to have a locations, your block, and your bed. You're going to need to have the crop that's growing there and then the first week it's in the field, so the planting week, and the last week it's going to be there, which is the harvest week. So you, if you have if you have this all this information, and actually if, if your main crop plan has this information, you can just refer to that too to get um, to get to build this. Now there are a few steps to get to that uh, crop map. The first step is writing is setting up a formula that shows what is being planted when, and so in this case block 101, bed 3, on week 21, lettuce is being planted. I'm going to use the filter formula to get that information. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll, I'll walk you through that. So I'll delete what's there right now. I'm going to write equals filter, open parentheses, and I'm going to the data sheet. I'm going to highlight the crop I want to see, column C. This is the answer I'm trying to get. Comma, the first condition I'm looking at is what block is it in? column A. When column A is equal to um, the block in A1, A5, um, comma, the next condition, which is the bed, when it's equal to the bed in B5, and then comma, the last condition, which is uh, the planting week, when it's equal to the week number in E2. Close parentheses, and the answer is lettuce, which is what I was hoping to see. So I'm glad it's there. And if I look at the CP data, so that's 101, bed 3, lettuce is here. If I go in and I change this information to beets, then this now says beets. And if I were to change this information to 22, uh, no, 22, it now has an error message. But you can see beets is showing up in 22 beside it. So this is the form that I'm setting up using filter. Um, I'll just get my information accurate again. Um, so that's the basic formula is the filter formula. There are two things that I've done to the filter formula also. One is I've used these dollar signs to anchor the columns and cells in specific locations to make it easy to copy paste everywhere. And then the other thing is I've used an if error formula to hide when the information is missing. So if I were to delete, get rid of the location, it gives an error formula. Um, so what I've done is I'm taking if error, open parentheses, and then it could be um, at the end of the formula, I could do comma zero, close parentheses. So this is the error, it's gonna give a zero, or I can just skip a value and it'll give nothing. So that's the the second part of what I did. Um, so the filter formula using dollars to anchor with an if error to show no me error message when there's one. 
and I'm just going to put that formula back into the week 21. So that's the first piece, and this is the easy piece of making it work. The second piece is using conditional formatting to look up whether there is a value, whether this value, 19, shows up in any of these ranges. Um, and so to do conditional formatting, uh, you can you know highlight the areas you're looking at. I'm going to the little tab in the in the menu called fill color, scrolling down to conditional formatting, and I have the menu on the side. So it is a conditional formula that shows up this tannish brown color when uh, something is in that is in that range. Um, so I'm using a custom formula to do that, and it's a pretty elaborate formula here. So I'm going to break that formula down a little bit in this other sheet here. So the intermediary step, this formula is using count ifs to count how many occurrences um, there are in the data sheet where there's a, a number between, between the range. Um, so that's the first part. And if it's higher than zero, it says true. And if it's lower than zero, it says false. So that's the first thing that this formula is doing. And this part I'm not going to break down because it's a little bit more elaborate. The second thing that this formula has to do is with conditional formatting, normally you can only refer to information on your same sheet. But using the indirect formula as part of your bigger formula lets you look at information elsewhere. So you'll see this occurrences of indirect multiple times um, with, the inf with the formula uh, as strings in between quotation, or not the formula, the the sheet address or the the, the, the cell address between, um, or the the cell reference between quotation marks, um, and so that's the second part, is pointing towards another sheet, and then the third part there's this if formula that shows uh, if the first row is empty, it's going to show a zero, which is what we see down here. It could also set it up so it shows a false, but in this case, I've done it to show a zero. So this formula will give you either a false or a true when there are locations, and if no locations, it's giving you a zero. Um, now, if you want to jump into this formula, you can look at the spreadsheet listed in the show notes below, and that'll let you uh, poke around that formula a bit more. And then, so using that formula, Going to the conditional formatting, you can plug it into the custom formula is so-and-so, and it's going to show you for that range, wherever it's true, it's going to be in this brownish color, and if it's false, it's going to be in this white color. And I've used the same approach in my farm spreadsheets for all seasons crop, uh, course, <laughs> uh, crop planning to have a more elaborate crop map. So you can see in this, here's, here's an, a, a sample from it, and it shows green when the crop is growing and brown when the crop is harvested. Um, it also shows multiple crops per bed, if there are multiple crops per bed. And then it also shows the bed feet and uh, varieties. So those are all things that you can do by tweaking these formulas and that I've already done in the templates that are part of the Farm Spreadsheets for All Season course. So that is another Farm Spreadsheet tip. <laughs> tip. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you have great crop planning crop maps in the future. If you want more spreadsheet tips like this, then subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you later. Happy farming.